All right, we are at Medieval Times at the Baltimore Castle, and I have not been here in, wow, multiple decades. So I'm excited to be back and excited to bring some family along with me. And of course, we'll bring you along with us, so stay tuned. For this tour, we were sure to arrive three hours early before the doors open so that we can tour the Arundel Mills Mall. Located in Ann Arundel County, Maryland, it opened its doors on November 17, 2000, and it marked the beginning of its journey as a prominent retail destination in the state. Among its notable anchor stores is the Medieval Times Dinner and Tournament Theater in Castle. This dinner theater, founded in 1983, offers an immersive experience replicating an 11th century style castle complete with knights, horses, and a royal court. It is an engaging blend of historical recreation and entertainment, showcasing jousting, sword fighting, and medieval style games. Right beside the castle was an art studio, which was a great way to spend some time while we waited for the castle doors to open. We looked at art and talked to the artists in the studio about what can be done with custom-made art on prints, on canvas, and things of that nature. As we walked around the mall, we enjoyed window shopping at notable stores such as the Lego store. As this was our first time in the mall, we were pleasantly surprised at the size, quality, and intricate designs that were featured in the Egyptian Cinemark Theater. Also located inside the mall, this theater is a magnificent display of Egyptian art and other details of Egyptian life. So we spent time there enjoying the artwork and the sculptures as well. Today, Arundel Mills Mall is the largest mall in the state of Maryland. All right, so we are in Arundel Mills Mall, which is the home of the Baltimore Castle Medieval Times. But I just wanted to point out some of the unique features in the mall. So if you are coming, um, I would recommend you come like an hour or two earlier than the door opening time so you can just get a feel for the mall because it's actually a really nice mall. As we entered the food court, we were greeted with a display of ice cream makers making Japanese rolled ice cream. Japanese rolled ice cream, also known as ice cream rolls or Thai rolled ice cream, is a popular frozen dessert that has its roots in Southeast Asia rather than Japan. The dessert gained popularity in Japan and other countries in recent years and its history can be traced back to Thai street food scene. Rolled ice cream is believed to have originated in Thailand in the early 2000s. Street vendors in Thailand started experimenting with the technique of making ice cream by pouring a liquid ice cream base onto cold metal surface, usually an ice cold griddle or pan. They would then mix and spread the liquid mixture until it froze into a thin solid sheet. The vendor would then use spatulas to scrape the frozen sheet into rolls which were placed vertically in cups or cones. Rolled ice cream quickly gained popularity in Thailand and soon spread to other Southeast Asian countries, such as Vietnam, Malaysia, and Singapore. The dessert's visually appearing presentation and the ability to customize flavors and toppings made it a hit among locals and tourists alike. While rolled ice cream originated in Thailand, it found its way to Japan in the mid-2010s. Japanese entrepreneurs and dessert shops adopted the concept, often adding their own unique twists and flavor combinations to cater to the local palate. The popularity of Japanese-style rolled ice cream continued to grow and eventually spread to other parts of the world, including North America, Europe, and beyond.
One surprising feature of this mall is an actual train ride that goes throughout the entire mall. It was about $7 per person, but many people were riding on it. And it was just a nice little delight to see a train just ride by as you were walking down the mall. It wasn't long before we were back at the castle getting ready to begin our dinner and tournament. In times of yore, when castles were mighty and stout, and the realm was under the sway of lords and kings, there lived a noble kind of warriors known as knights. These men of arms, sheath and shining havoc, were the very sinew of bone and chivalry and martial might. From tender years, these youths were trained in the art of horse and blade, and upon reaching full manhood, they were anointed as knights in solemn rites. Bounded by the code of chivalry, these knights upheld courage, honor, and the defense of the powerless. They were sworn to defend their lieges' keep, to uphold uprightness, and to battle with honor. In the art of sword play, these knights found their greatest skill, not only for the brutal fray of war, but for the glory of the tourney. In these grand jousts and melees, beneath the shadow of the high castles, knights clashed in valorous combat. These castles, with their high battlements and roads, moats, served as more than mere abodes of lords. They were strongholds of war. Within these stone walls, knights lived and prepared for the clash of arms. Thus, in the rich weave of medieval days, knights stand as paragons of martial prowess and chivalric honor, their lives a tapestry of war and nobleness set against the backdrop of the great castles of old. In times of yore, neath castles walls so high, where banners flew against the azure sky, there lived the knights in armor bright and bold, their tales of valor and chivalry long told. In courtyards fair and Mr. Trumpet's call, they trained in arms, the young and old, all, with swords that gleamed like morning dew, in combat dance their prowess grew. For honor, for glory, they rode into fray under the banner of their lord's sway. Across verdant fields and mountains tall, their deeds of bravery doth enthrall. In joust they shone like stars at night, lances in hand, a splendid sight. The clash of steel, a symphony of war, echoed through lands both near and far. In halls of stone, by flickering light, they feasted, sang through the night. Their tales of dragons, damsels fair, filled every heart with longing, rare. Yet amidst the clash, the glory, the fame, they stood for justice in chivalry's name. Protectors of weak, defenders of right, in God's name they took their knightly plight. So remember these knights in days of old, their stories of bravery forever told, and the shadow of castles, midst legends and lore, their spirits live on forevermore. Yet, 
this world has been granted to your champion. Is he the greatest of us all? Yeah. Let the coming contest begin. And the song with energy shall be joined on the bench for the champion of air, the Green Knights.
Maybe in Yellow Knives Law, I'd be seen as a madness that poisons even the noblest of me.